Hi, I'm Katie Oglesby, an edible garden designer and holistic health coach. Today I'm coming to you from my beautiful kitchen garden. We're gonna dig into organic ways to prevent and manage pests in the garden. So keep watching this video if you'd love to learn more. One of the most beneficial ways to control or manage pests in the garden is to create plant partnerships and diversity. We forget that over 96% of pests or insects are either beneficial and or neutral. So one of the things that I like to remember in the garden is that we want to create a diversity and ecosystem to make sure that we're bringing in all the beneficials and pollinators to make sure that mother nature is working with us to control those in the garden. So as you can see here in my raised beds, I have lots of different textures, colors, and plants that are in the garden. And one of the things that I think is important to remember is diversity. So for example, here we have a purple salvia, I have some lemon thyme and I have some calendula here. So when we think about different smells in the gardens, different color and different texture, not only are we creating diversity, but we're integrating some plants that we can think of as trap crops. So calendula is one of those that I think adds a lot of diversity to the garden. It's edible and it also is a great trap crop for aphids. And so that is one of the things that I do see in the garden. And here's a great example where you can see this on the plant. So even though we see that on there, I think that this plant is really doing its job as far as attracting that and keeping it off some of our other plants and minimizing damage on our other crops and kind of keeping it at bay here. So one of the things that I will say is I will see them early in the year on my elderberries and you can take a hose and just really blast off those bugs or you can use more of an organic product such as Arbor to manage these pests. So it's just one of those things that I want everyone to be very conscientious of or very reactionary when we go and see a pest. Like nobody wants pests in our garden, right? We've worked very hard to create our gardens, but to really stop and think and make sure before we spray or apply something that we're supporting the garden that we know that it's not necessarily harmful to our plants that is not a beneficial and just take our time to make sure that we're thinking before we go ahead and react so here's just a little bit of an example some of the other things that we can talk about is we'll see companion planting a lot of people will love to plant basil next to our tomatoes um, there's some correlation that it kind of takes down the hornworm. We love to see dill by our cucumbers, right? There's a lot of different companion planting techniques that we can also use, but sometimes we aren't all able to have the real estate to really dive into some of those philosophies of companion planting or trap cropping. We don't want to grow things that necessarily we may not be using in our garden. And so really my philosophy is, is to create like a diversity like you can see here. Another important factor to remember when it comes to organic pest control and prevention is plant and crop rotation. So here is my in-ground vegetable patch and because it's a little bit bigger, it's easier for me to do some rotation. One of the biggest pest problems that I have is the potato bug. So for example, the potatoes were actually in this section of the garden two years ago. And even though it was two years ago and we rotate to different corners of this garden, they still come back. And so I had some eggplants in here earlier and the potato bugs came out and ate them. They love nightshade plants. So really some of the things is the plants that you love to grow and pests that you know you do have a problem with in the garden, really thinking through your plant placement and rotation makes a big difference. So the potato bug has been a nemesis that I've been fighting for years. So eventually we've moved them even though they've been in different locations in ground, They're, they've come back in two different spots. So they've attacked my flowering tobacco, nightshade plants, my eggplant. And so rotation makes a huge difference. And since I don't wanna go one year without my potatoes, we've actually moved them out of the in-ground into a raised bed to give this a little bit of a break. So if you aren't able to do heavy crop rotation, because you can see this is kind of a big area or you're in more raised beds like the kitchen garden, that's where your garden hygiene and soil health is gonna come into play and make a bigger difference for you and making sure that you're staying on top of that when it comes to preventing pest problems. So if you aren't able to rotate, again, let's make sure we focus on quality soil health and hygiene. 
Another important factor of maintaining a healthy garden and getting ahead of any type of pest problems is garden hygiene. So garden hygiene means a lot of things and I highly recommend that you create like a weekly maintenance routine to make sure that we're addressing some of these things in the garden because we want to be proactive and not reactive when it comes to getting ahead of any potential pest problems. So one of the important things to talk about is when we talk about garden hygiene is plant debris. So here's a little bit of an example of yesterday where I actually removed all of our beets. Um, and I'm gonna be replanting. So when we talk about plant debris, we wanna make sure that we, we're cleaning up any of this like dead plant material. We wanna make sure that we have a nice, clean, fresh slate for anything that might be going in next. And so we wanna make sure that we've kind of cleaned up all this debris before we go ahead and plant. And I always recommend adding some fresh compost. So every time in between I plant, we're gonna add some fresh compost. We wanna make sure that we're supporting any new plants with the proper nutrients that they need, knowing that the last plants have probably used most of the nutrients in the existing soil. So healthy soil is a foundation to healthy plants, right? And when we wanna get ahead of pest problems, our plants have the strongest chance of getting past that when we are starting with a healthy foundation. So make sure our garden sites when we're either beginning to garden or in the middle of succession planting are free of debris, or adding fresh compost before we go ahead and plant. One of the other important things when it comes to planting is identifying any plants that might need support. So airflow is really important when it comes to the health of the plant. So when we're planting or we're specifically maybe doing a super intensive planting, making sure that we've really strategically laid that out. So there's many different types of trellising options. So I just removed our sugar snap peas from this trellis last night. Um, my sweet potatoes are gonna go up that, but making sure that we have proper plant support. Airflow makes a big difference when we think about squash, cucumbers, tomatoes. When we have congestion, it's another way for pests to kind of harbor in those types of areas. And so just making sure when we're planting out, we have proper trellising or plant support. We have some fresh compost and we've made sure that we've cleaned up any debris. And I'll kind of show you another example of how we're gonna work through our weekly maintenance routine with debris and pruning. So a few more tips when it comes to maintaining a healthy garden and garden hygiene. So my weekly routine includes some pruning and pruning is super important, right? We don't wanna leave any type of dead plant material on our plants. We don't wanna create environments that are gonna harbor pests. That also comes with weeding. So we wanna make sure that our gardens are weed free. We've probably pruned our plants for airflow and removed anything that looks damaged and are marginal on the plants. And then we're gonna make sure again that we remove any type of debris in the garden. So here's an example when I go through my garden weekly that you can see this plant has dropped some dead material. That is a perfect environment for pests and disease to harbor. So we wanna make sure that we get this all cleaned up and that our garden you know, is really free of any type of those activities. So again, let's do a little quick recap. We're gonna make sure that we're adding fresh compost when we plant. We wanna make sure that we're weeding regularly and pruning and removing any plant debris that may be laying around in our gardens. Okay, just a few more final tips when it comes to controlling pests in our garden organically. So there's a lot of different organic options that we can use. However, not all organic solutions are created equal and some of them are still detrimental to our bee population and beneficial. So it is kind of a rule of thumb that the only product I do use is Arbor because I know that it's safe for me, safe for my dogs and safe for the environment. So that is part of my weekly routine. I do use all three of these products weekly and I treat my garden and my soil. That is just part of my weekly maintenance routine. I wanna make sure that I'm proactive and that reactive with supporting my plant's health, just like we like to do with ourselves in our own health journeys and our own lives to make sure that we are really trying to make sure we give ourselves the best fighting chance. So again, that is one option to make sure that you're creating some type of proactive routine when it comes to supporting your plant's health. Pests happen in the garden. We are outside, it's mother nature. It's something that we're gonna always battle with. So again, that's why I really feel like that if we can try to get ahead of the game and create these routines, it'll be super valuable and you're gonna see a healthier garden. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is consistent 
watering. Watering is one of those things that I see a lot of people struggling with and it can affect the plant's health. And again, when our plant's health is marginal, it becomes more susceptible to pests. So learning your soil and your microclimate in your garden, because when I may be watering, you might not be watering and even same for your neighbor. So the best thing that I recommend is to learn your soil. And that means putting your hand in the dirt. I want you to make sure that you're checking moisture levels before you water. Having a consistent water routine is super important and the best way to learn that is to feel the dirt. So when you can kind of dig in here, sometimes I'll even go even farther down just to see how moist that soil is. So I can feel that this is moist. I watered this last night. This garden is good to go. Usually when you stick your finger in, and sometimes I'll even say to go deeper, depending on how established these plants are. So you really learn that moisture level. We don't want plants drowning, but we also don't want them super dry. So one of the most important things is to learn your garden, learn your soil, learn your microclimate, and I guarantee it's gonna give you a healthier garden. If you have any other questions that we can help answer with regarding to your garden journey or organic pest control, please comment below. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. If you're interested in following me, you can reach me at katieoglesby.com or on social media channels at KDM Oglesby. Thanks again for joining us today.